All right, uh, less than about 20 minutes ago, probably maybe 15 minutes ago, um, as I'm recording this uh, with my colleague Big J, Paul Gallen scored a third round TKO stoppage over Justin Hodges. What, did, what does he call him? Joe Ho? I believe that's what he called him. Um, five and one. Hodge. 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 There you Hodge. go. Hodge. Five and one. With uh, a, Hodge. Not Hodge. 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 Joe. Gotcha. Hodge. Okay. Um, that's it. Basically, two 40 year old. Um, um, was Justin a uh, footballer too? Yeah, no, not a footballer, a footy player. Footy, footy player. player. So, so explain the history between these before we get into the uh, the meat of things. Explain the history between these two and how this fight came to be for, for fans who don't know. Okay, so Justin Hodges, like Paul Gallen, both former NRL players. Justin Hodges won three premierships, won two of the Broncos, one of the Roosters. Um, played from, I think, the early 2000s right up until uh, 2015, I think. Mm -hmm. Gallon ran the same time. He was the premiership winning captain uh, of the 2016 Cronulla Sharks. But the rivalry really started from Justin Hodges is from Queensland. Paul Gallon is from New South Wales. And Paul Gallon, on record, is the least is the least successful New South Wales origin captain in history because he captained New South Wales to eight consecutive mm -hmm. losses when Hodger was the Queenslander winning eight, eight winning eight origins in a row. So that's where that rivalry came from. Uh, but it, more so the the origin the origin rivalries in NRL are far more um, um, deeper than any club rivalry. You've got mates who are, you've got teammates who play for New South Wales and Queensland, they'll kill each other quick as look at you. Even okay. though they're teammates, as soon as that blue and or blue jersey or maroon jersey goes on, they're mm -hmm. sworn enemies. Okay. Doesn't so, matter what play, what club you play at. So then so um I did get a chance to watch the fight. I didn't get it. I didn't get to the desk until the um um the uh, Joe Goodall fight. So I did get a chance to watch this main event um in its entirety until it was ended in the third round. But one thing I looked at from the very beginning, from the very opening bell is Paul Gallen, even though he wasn't the fastest fighter, he just looked significantly slower and older and just, you know, just war torn. Um, it was really kind of sad to see him in there. And what round was it that he got dropped? Was that round number one or number two? Number two. Round number two was the crazy round. I have the clip pulled up here, um, the image where Paul Gallen um, was dropped. But then in the next exchange, um, uh, Hodges was on the ropes and Paul Gallen was letting go of Flurry, but then he hit um, Hodges. And looking at the image here, it was pretty crazy. His body was completely leaned and bent over the ropes when um, Paul Gallen had hit him. And the referee didn't deduct a point or anything. Now, I can understand why the referee didn't do it for a um, you know a big event like this. But at the end of the day, I do feel that Paul Gallen should have been penalized. What are your thoughts? Should have been fucking disqualified. I mean, that was a blatant illegal blow. Yeah, but they, yeah, it was blatant. But the, they the wasn't going to disqualify Paul Gallon, not for this card. But yes, oh, well, they probably would have been. Yeah. Well, no, but being that would have happened in Queensland, it would have worked in their favour. If it was mm. New South Wales, it probably would have been a fucking riot. Yeah. But uh, doing that in Queensland, that would have been fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, but fuck, fuck what the crowd wants. That goes against the rules of the sport. That is true. That and, was and a somebody can get hurt. Legal. Yeah. That was a blatant illegal blow, and he should have at least a point, a point dropped off, even not, you know, okay, bullshit, fire it over, Hodges wins by disqualification. But mind you, Hodjo um, hit um, Paul after the ref called break. Well, that's one that's not as bad, but that, that one that Gallon mm. did was a blatant illegal blow, and he should have been penalised for it. So, so do you I mean, the whole... Go ahead. The whole main event was a fucking fiasco. So I mean, it, 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 no was, it was high intensity, but it was a whole bunch of nothing going on. And what I noticed is mm -hmm. um, Paul Gallen, he really had to tuck his head and, and, and really go in and be the pressure fighter and go for the kill because it seemed like he was slowing down tremendously. And it was only uh, four two minute rounds, which I found kind of, you know, bizarre for a main event, at least make them three. But at the end of the day, you know, um, I think Paul Gallen is cooked. He's saying he says he has one fight left on his uh, main event contract. 
um, his no limit contract, and they're trying to build up another fight with him versus Hodges. You think they can do that? But then I was saying in my in my um individual post fight video is that I'm used to this type of shit from Australian boxing, so I won't be surprised if November they go ahead and put together um you know uh Gallon versus Hodges too. But then they're saying it's going to be uh six three minute rounds. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, they'll do it. They shouldn't, but they will. Yeah, they'll do it. We don't, they will definitely do that shit. And it looks and it looks like they already have pretty much the card set. You know, because they were given hints in the post fight interview is that that November the twelfth card is pretty much already like I think it was going to be Gallons anyway, and that's too short of a turnaround for him. Especially like, at forty one years they're old, burning this man out. Mm, yeah, I mean, I don't like it one bit. I mean, I didn't like the idea of this fight in the first place. Mm. Right? Um, it shouldn't have happened. As I've said, Australian boxing doesn't need these bloody circus acts for football players anymore. Yeah. And the worst thing is, and we talked about this before we were recording, it's probably the reason why No Limit didn't secure Ebony versus Shannon, because they blew all their money on this bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they probably That's had the a certain budget is- for the year, and they just didn't have enough because... Ooh. You know, you you know. Here's here's how I know that Paul Gallon makes a lot of money. For one, the event sold out. Um, but also, they're talking about if if Hodges would have won, the rematch would have been a million dollars. Yeah, where you, the fuck? Did, like, how did that money Hodge to now? Instead of giving Hodge a million dollars a rematch, bloody Gallon, mm-hmm. bid it on so we can get Ebony Shannon like a legitimate yeah, fight. Yeah. So, um, for those who don't know, really quickly, we're going to do an individual video um, on this about 24 hours from now. Uh, Ebony Bridges and Shannon O'Connell, uh, purse has been won, uh, purse bid has been won by uh, Eddie Hearn, um, Matchroom Boxing. So, the fight will likely definitely, you know, there's still a chance it may happen in Australia, but it looks like it may happen in the uh, UK. But uh, but uh, back to this fight. Um, so, in a rematch, you know, before we move on to the other opponent, in a rematch, do you feel that um, Hodges has a better chance because... Uh, Paul Gallon is going to be burnt out, and maybe if he steps on the gas early, because he already he, he showed that he can drop him. Yeah, you know, but but, but, can, he, but can he outwill Paul Gallon? Because Paul Gallon does have the will to keep going. He will go oh, out on his shield. Yeah, Gallon will go on his shield, but if Hodges does the same thing he did in the first two rounds, keeps his distance, he'll smack he'll smack the shit out of Paul Gallon because that's what he's susceptible to. Go back and look at the fights. Barry Hall, Justice Justice Hooney, and even the last bloke he fought all kept him at distance. If you keep him at distance, you'll smack Paul in the face all day. Yeah, true. You let him on the inside because he's got some good overhand hooks. Yeah, he does. He does. He, he's yeah, not he afraid go, he to hit somebody's right bigger your than guard. Him. Yeah, because I think most, if not all, of the fellas he's fought have been taller than him, so he's, he's quite used to hitting bigger fellas. Yeah, he's definitely but pretty good in the phone booth. Di- yeah, if you use your range, you'll smack the shit out of him all day. Yeah. So, and Hojo has a good, what, four or five inches reach on him? He's, yeah, I according can't to Box Rec, the... um, let's see if they have it listed. They don't have it listed. But he's about, six, but he's about six tape, foot three, but... six foot four, and Paul Gallon is listed at just a little under uh, six foot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hojo's about six three. Okay. Six three. Um, so yeah, Ho- yeah, Ho- Hojo would belt him in a rematch if he keeps his distance and does exactly the same thing he did in the first two rounds. Well, out of respect, uh, since we've covered um, Paul Gallon for the better part of three years now, um, we will be covering his last fight if it's his last fight, and um, no, we're going to talk. About, we're going to talk about him um, a little bit more later on in the video. But I didn't get a chance to see the Ben Hannett fight. I looked at some uh, clips on um, on uh, Twitter. Uh, how'd that fight go? Uh, scrappy, but you know, Ben Hannett did extremely well for someone in his predicament. 37 yeah, years he, old, only had saying, one um, He promised his fight. wife he's going to buy the, a pool with the winnings. I mean, with the money he's made. So he's fighting for a pool. Well, good stuff. Yeah, but um, yeah, he did, he did all right. For a 37 year old, he's only had two professional fights and lost, what, 10 kilos? Uh, to get into shape of this. He did pretty well. Yeah, he didn't get stopped. I mean, he, and he, Hodges did. He, he didn't get stopped. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, to hang it. And, and Paul Gallon was fresh for that fight, too, don't forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, you, you know, to go four rounds with someone who's had 15 fights and knock out Lucas Brown and you hang with him, mm-hmm. you got to tip your hat for that. So. Okay. But, um, but 
What? I think I think Gallon was taken probably a little bit easy because he wanted to smack Hodges. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, but, pacing but still, himself. Yeah, pacing himself exactly. All right. Exactly. Um, let's move on to the uh, undercard. Um, you had two big upsets. Fucking brilliant. Uh, one of one of them showing on the screen right now. You had a uh, Renault Quinlan uh, knock out a um, Jack Bowen. Jack Bowen. Now, yep, no, 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 Quinlan, for those who don't know, um, he's currently 15, 11 with 10 KOs, 33 years old. Um, here's some names that I'm going to just, you know, say that he's fought Joshua Boazzi. He's fought uh, Chris Eubank Jr., uh, Daniel Real Deal Gill. So, you know, he is a quality name, even though he's lost a shitload of fights over the last several years. But he is, you know, he is a name in boxing. And and I'm guessing he was supposed to be a stepping stone for Jack Bowen. And things didn't go to plan. Jack Bowen coming into the fight was 7-0 and with 7 KOs, 26 years old. And he was stopped in round yeah. number five. I thought, well, pretty much everyone else thought, oh, God, Quinnow's going to get the shit kicked out of him again. But to Quinnow's credit, Hold on one minute. Go ahead. Belted I'm listening. Him. Yeah, I said he belted him and knocked him the fuck out. And in my opinion, that is the knockout of the year because it's the... Over Hartman versus upset. Rafa? No, that was... That, that bloke never should have been in the ring with Hartman. So, yeah, it was a good knockout, but that guy was 10 years old and had fought two years. This kid was, what, eight years younger and expected to take Ronald Quinlan's head off. Yeah. So I'm I'm giving domestic knockout of the year to Ronald Quinlan. Okay. Because I think her, It's nasty. I'm looking me, at it right now. Like, he had a real hard time, like, getting it. up. It's nasty. Yeah. It's not. It, it was like bang. I was like, "Holy shit!" Okay, so what was and the fight? What was the fight looking like leading up to the knockout? Uh, Quinlan was actually. It was. I think two two by the time that I know. It was Reynolds. Uh, like marginally won the first two rounds. Then the young fella came back in the third, okay. and then Reynolds took control in the fourth. And the knockout was and coming. Clean, and then clean. You saw it coming, basically. Yeah, the knockout was coming in round number five. It didn't happen in round number four, but. Yeah, he like softened him up in round number four, and round number five just finished him off. That's why it happened so quick. It was like happened what? It was like um when did like that old uh, IBF bloke when he won his belt back? What was his name Martinez? Same sort Christian of Martinez. situation. Yeah, when he won his IBF featherweight belt, he softened up old oh. mate in the fourth round and um, cleaned him up in the fifth. Um, don't know. That wasn't Sergio Martinez. Uh, Julio Cesar no, Martinez. Tico, Tico, Tico. Tico Martinez. The... Oh, I, oh, with Kid Galahad. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, got you. yeah. But the same situation. He was softened up in the fourth round, come out for the fifth, and came out the fifth round up. and got him out of there real quick. Yeah, same sort of situation as that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, but still, go ahead. Still, a very big up, a very big upset, and a significant win for Reynolds Quinlan. And what was the so, uh, other upset? Um, Lachlan Higgins knocked the shit out of. Fuck, I can't remember who he fought now. Who did Lachlan Higgins fight? Hold on, I don't see him on here. Yeah, Lachlan Higgins. Yeah, he's knocked the daylights out of him. No, Two um, rounds. oh, 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 Benjamin Hussein. That's it, Benjamin Hussein. Yeah, okay. Benjamin Hussein was supposed to win that fight and easy, and Lachlan Higgins knocked the shit out of him. Okay. Was that two rounds? Um, I think it was two rounds. Let me see here. Does this? Yeah, it's not. Yep, two rounds. And he set, yeah, uh, nope. and just so happened, Lachlan Higgins um, is listed on BoxRec to return on the 8th in Newcastle. Yeah. So he, yeah, I guess he, I guess he wasn't that. supposed to win, you know, and he was going to go on no. the journeyman route and, you know, had another fight scheduled. But now he's got this uh, 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 big upset. Uh, Angel Rustin. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Angel lost, Rustin. She lost Angel. a unanimous decision um, to a um, yeah. Angie Harris. Yep, and yep. that was her debut. Uh, Angel Rustin is the daughter of Glenn Rustin, the trainer of um, Hello, correct. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Horn. Horn. Yep. Yep. And, so, yeah, um, big. Go ahead. Yeah, that was a big, big upset because considering the fact that um, Angie was like 11 years older and a debutante, a very decorated amateur, but still for um, Angel Rustin to lose to a woman that's far older than her. Yeah, I'm looking. She's definitely um, older. Yeah, if she's good 11 years old, you think, well, that's a bit of a, that's a major setback. That's a major mm -hmm. setback. So, I mean, I thought if she kept winning, she would have been in line to possibly fight Sky Nicholson, but that's off the card now. So. Okay. 
and so, uh, Joseph, and yeah, uh, well, let's so talk about Ty Telford cool. first. Uh, you had something to say about him? I he knocked out old mate in like one round. Um, really, really. Uh, I think it was like fifty some. It wasn't even a minute. Fifty nine seconds. Okay, knocked got him out, out of the Indian fella, and yeah. Uh, uh, there was a concern that uh, there was a lot of knockouts where ref, where people think that the refs were calling it off early. Mm-hmm. None of them were called off early. They were all fair decisions. I mean, old mate, whose name I can't even pronounce. He yeah, was out gonna, on I'm his feet. I'm going to call him Van La La Law. I'm just going to call him Van La. They, they just called him. They just called him Bear. They Van, just called there you him go. Bear. Yeah, call so, him Van. Yeah. There you go. Bear, yeah, old mate Bear. Yeah, he was out on his feet. I mean, he snapped straight back into it, but he was gone. If that fight kept going, he could have got seriously hurt. So it was a good stop. Okay, good and Gary uh, Harry Garside was supposed to be on this card against a uh, Miles Zalewski. Miles Zalewski ended up um, staying on the card fighting a Shiva. Uh, uh, Mishra? Yeah, M- Mishra. Yep, Mishra. You know, and how did he look? I'm guessing they're probably going to try to revisit that. Um, Harry Garcia versus uh, Zalowski fight, Zalewski fight. Yep, uh, Garcia versus Zalewski. I'm um, tipping will be on that November card that they've got going on. Um, November 12th card or whatever they think. That will that will most likely happen. Yep, Zalewski looked good, but can he get a glove on Harry Garcia? Remains to be seen. Harry Garcia is very, very slick. Okay, and, uh, but I'm looking forward to that. And Joseph Goodall has stopped a, um, what's this guy's name? Uh, Arsene, Arsene Fosso. Fosso uh, in yeah, round nice uh, three. We remember um, Goodall from fighting uh, and covering him against uh, Justice Hooney back in June in Justice Hooney's uh, return. And he ended up calling out Paul Gallant, which I found a yeah, little bit disgraceful. Gallant said he's been calling him out for years and i'm guessing that's just all about the payday you yeah. know because you're getting no real stripes for that but overall how would you rate the uh, undercard on a scale of uh one to ten and then how would you rate so, the well, card with, on a scale of one to ten as a whole well with 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 the upsets it would have to be a seven or an eight because okay. it was you know yeah if it went the way it was supposed to go i would have got a four but mm-hmm. with those upsets and I, seven or an eight that's how but I felt the with um, the Andy Ruiz um, loser tease undercard. If it wasn't for the upset, um, the upset that happened, then you know it raised it raised the profile of the uh, undercard. Go ahead, finish what you're saying. Yeah, de- definitely, it definitely raised the profile of the undercard. Uh, the whole event, as the event as a whole, probably a six because the good old fight we knew that was going to happen. I mean, us um, Fosso took a knee and pretty much mm-hmm. quit. So I knew that was going to happen. That was a complete freaking mismatch. Um, the hot, the, the main event, you know, was it just shot everything to shit. I mean, if the main event was decent, it would have stayed an eight, but it's dropped down to like a six. Cause, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, the refereeing was fucking disgusting in the main event. Just the main event. The rest of the night was fine. The main event referee that was yeah, terrible. So, it should have been a disqualification. So back so, on to the uh, main event. Uh, Paul Gallen um, said when he sat down after he left the ring, he sat down with the uh, main event host over at the uh, table, and basically they brought up the uh, Sonny Bill fight, and he's been pretty adamant, saying, "Listen, he's got one more fight with no limit main event, and that he's done, and that um, he had some talks with Sonny Bill and his team about a year ago, but the ship is." He said, "This is a quote, you know, that fucking ship has sailed." Yeah, and so it should be. So. You know, Sonny Bill's too too interested in beating up poor old Mark Hunt. So, mm-hmm. And we did a whole video you know, on that, but, by the way, and a podcast on the 5 v 360 Boxing Podcast. And the video is um on the YouTube channel if you want to hear um our thoughts on the um, upcoming Australian boxing schedule so far, including the uh, Sonny Bill versus Mark Hunt fight. And when is that happening again? I forgot the date. November? November 5th. November 5th. Well, we're going to be here covering yeah. it. I expect for it to be ugly. But, um... But, yeah, I think, you know, and I really believe that, you know, that fight is really dead. It's just too much that would be in the way for that fight uh, uh, to happen. But since we're short on time, um, closing thoughts on uh, Paul Gallen? Well, you know, as I said, you know, you've got to give you've got to give Paul Gallen respect because he's, you know, he pretty much took over from when Mundine retired, kept the sport going, built up all these young fellas on these undercards. And now, as I said, Australia has at least a dozen fighters that have or have the ability to headline a main event card mm-hmm. and you know we're having championship fights left right and center 
Um, the football tie, the football players need to retire and stay retired. We don't need them getting into, you know, boxing rings. If they want to switch over to boxing, do it when they're 25, 26. Don't do it when they're 35, 36. Yeah. So, you know, do it in their primes. So, you know, um, he's done wonderful things for the sport, but he's got one more fight. If he does it, okay, fine. He's con- contractually obligated to do it. But then after that, please piss off home. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm is- tired of him too, you know, because I'm seeing, you know, like we're seeing, you know, how he's regressing. You know, he's getting, he's older. He's slower. You know, he's taking more punches. You know, he's willing to take more punches to be able to get his punches off, you know, and I don't want to see him hurt. So, uh, you know, no. um, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed covering his fights to an extent, you know, out of respect. But, you know, since he is technically... Um, Australian's uh, number one boxer, and then with him and Tim Zhu, you know, I'm talking about financially, you know, we, we got to give him respect and cover him for the people who want to see him. For example, just a little bit of stats here. This is how uh, popular Paul Gallen is. I posted my video, my individual video, about no more than a half an hour ago, as soon as the fight was over, and it's already at, um, according to the real-time YouTube views, a thousand views. So that goes to show you right there, he does bring in you know, some type of buzz, and he sold out the event, you know? Um, yeah, no, and I was happy I was happy that they sold out the event. I was actually a little bit shocked, but then again, when you think about it, New South Welshman in Queensland, they're going to beat him up. That that always sells. I mean, yeah. it's like, um, I Which saw a video reason... the other night about... Go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. Which is more reason why there I believe go. that that, re- that rematch is definitely going to happen in November. Oh, yeah, because it's... Uh, remember... Australians, Queensland, New South Welshmen, you mentioned the word origin, they will buy it. Mm. If Eddie is a smart man, he will have Ebony versus Shannon and flog origin and it'll sell itself. Yeah. So we'll get to that another video because otherwise, you know. But and it should be in I, Australia. I really just hope. Sorry? It should be in Australia. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that video next. But I heard, listen to this shit. He wants to put it, he was thinking about putting it on the undercard to. My tenor loves Stevie Spark, and where the fuck's that happening? I hire Ohio. Somebody? Whoa. Yeah, that's what he said on this video I sent to you. I'm like, fuck, uh, oh, please don't do that. Fuck. See, that's the thing. Australian boxing has always had a bad thing for screwing itself. And if we lose Ebony and Shannon to overseas, to Ohio, it's of just all another places. example of. Not even a big market. Well, wherever, town. That, wherever that fight's happening, isn't it in Ohio? It's Ohio. Monta- I, you know, that's a state, isn't it? The state's the, wherever that Montana loves to be spark. Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. Fuck no, you can't put that a fight on oh, that caliber on it. No. Yeah. Ah. But anyway, this is another example of Australian boxing screwing itself. Because if we lose this, we've got no one to blame by ourselves. Yeah. So, but anyway, you know, I mean, it's you know, <laughs> no limit to stop these football shows and go after the real fights because the fighters are there and losing Ebony and Shannon to Eddie is another example of hang on a second don't worry about the football players we've got legitimate boxes let's take care of them yeah that's my, that's my final thought for the night all right uh take your time out like the video subscribe follow us on follow me on Twitter T Street controversy and big J at old mate big J um the fight the 360 boxing podcast on all of your um podcast listening platforms you can literally Google the Fight View 360 Boxing Podcast and our episodes will pop up. But we are available on Spotify, Apple, um, iHeartRadio, Amazon. You can even talk to talk to your um, Alexa and our episodes will pop up. Um, thanks for watching. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. 